The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour with me. And of course, it doesn't matter where me or you are at, as long as we're all together here at the time that is appointed. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So what do we have going on today? Well, we are down a little bit more. Uh, and by more, uh, what was the low of the day out here? Uh, yeah, about uh, about what the range was that uh, we were talking about in the newsletter this morning. Uh, 3848.80 was the low, and the range really looks like about 3850 to 3900. Uh, and that kind of looks like it's locked in until Wednesday. Uh, where we'll get the uh, CPI numbers. Then, of course, Thursday, we actually have some uh, earnings numbers. But uh, I did, wasn't expecting a whole lot other than some chop and noise today and tomorrow. Certainly, when we get into those CPI numbers, we'll probably break out one way or the other. And uh, then we'll hurry up and wait again for earnings numbers on Thursday. But uh, that's kind of it. So we'll have some headline risk uh, Wednesday and Thursday. I don't think that there's a lot of reasons to get in front of this if you're not trading on a five-minute chart. But uh, uh, option market makers do not think that there's a high probability that we either break down or up out of this range before uh, the numbers on Wednesday. And even then, kind of looks maybe like more they're looking toward the earnings on Thursday. 877-927-6648 uh, is the number to reach me with your dulcet tones and questions. Uh, you can also always email me at path at tfnn.com. see what else we have going on here. Well, let's do a little bit of history and then we'll get uh, moving on. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. On this day in 1979, the first American space station, Skylab, re-enters the Earth's atmosphere and burns up after plans for keeping it in orbit failed to materialize. Fragments of Skylab fell around Perth, Australia, killing one cow. Since then... Uh, Almost all uh, satellites have been programmed to fall into the ocean on the uh, west side of Australia since there's not a whole lot uh, between uh, Madagascar and Australia, as we found out much later in uh, Malaysian uh, Airlines 370s crashed where there just isn't anything out there. One of the lone, most lonely, least trafficked, and uh, forgotten parts of the entire world. I think you get more people uh, looking at the Antarctic and, uh, and the uh, North Pole than you get do anything else. But uh, that was kind of it. Not much happened. I remember we went to a big party and there were many drinking games played. Uh, but uh, eh, occasionally everything comes in. I think there's one lady that actually has been hit by a piece of space junk. And so far, no human killed. Uh, she was in, uh, a, I think, like on a lounger or on a, maybe she was in bed. Can't remember. All I remember is she wasn't doing anything. Uh, and a piece of junk came through the ceiling and hit her in the leg uh, from uh, some satellite. She won a bunch of money from it. But uh, that's about it. Things fall down. What goes up must come down, just generally a lot longer than uh, these low Earth things that are out there, which eh, eventually will all have to come back to Earth. 877-927-6648. I uh, did have a question on Friday that I said I had answered today, and uh, they were asking about databases and 
they really didn't understand the differences between them. Uh, what is a data base? Why would a company say they're a data warehouse? What's a data lake? And uh, there's a there's a lot of things to think about. But uh, uh, you know, it's a big sector. You've got Oracle, who's traditionally thought of as a as of a database company. Um, but uh, I, probably the short description. We got about three and a half minutes here to go. A database gets information it's very specific and it tends to i mean the old thought of a database was uh accounting right it kept certain small numbers of of things and it could sort those things very well uh but uh you know you had to index what you wanted to look for the big difference between a database and a data warehouse uh, is you may have lots of databases and they may all plugged into a, a data warehouse uh, product and that summarizes and reports it. Think of uh, all the transactions uh, that you may have at local places around the United States for Amazon as everybody orders from them and they have their own databases at their own local hub and they control uh, maybe you know four or five shipping outlets or maybe 500 who knows. But eventually, you've got to consolidate all of that. And one of the reasons uh, you don't want to uh, consolidate all that information, but kind of just the high-level averages and major numbers, is that uh, you just wouldn't be able to keep up with the amount of data coming in. So databases feed into data warehouses where they do summaries and reporting. Uh, much like we look at moving averages, that's kind of stuff that a data warehouse does. Uh, databases can be different. Uh, traditionally, databases work on numbers, but uh, there are more databases now like MongoDB. They're called NoSQL databases that search documents. Uh, there's also databases for videos, like on YouTube. A data lake is a kind of product that various databases can dump into uh, where you it may not be known up front what kind of da data is actually coming. So a data lake is kind of, uh, you don't really know what's going to be there so you throw it all in there kind of like YouTube also there may be video or audio there may be all kinds of different things there may be documents there may be accounting um, and you'll <clears throat> fish the data out of the data lake later to maybe do some uh, uh, some processing on it but uh, there are databases and data warehouses and data lakes uh, these are all part of a thing called online analytical processing or OLAP as it's talked about in the industry. But uh, databases feed into data warehouses uh, where summaries and reporting and decisions are made. Databases are the last line of defense where if the data doesn't come into the database, you're never going to be able to get it. It gets summarized in a data warehouse. And if you don't know what to do with that, you throw it in the data lake. And then maybe one day you go back to the data lake and you start looking uh, and that's kind of Amazon. We'll finish this up when we return. We'll be back in a minute. In a time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large scale, low cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd feasibility study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. difference between it had a good question uh, during the break and that is why is snowflake considered to be a data warehouse um if you're if you're uh uh if you've got let's say 40 databases running all over the country um shoving all that into one master database is problematic um uh, you won't be able to keep up with it databases are real time like we get stock quotes and they're almost instantaneous. Data warehouses are summaries and reporting. They're kind of the stuff that you get at the end of the day. Uh, they're the, uh, uh, the data part of uh, a lot of the systems for uh, making dashboards. Uh, and uh, you know, you really don't want to see every piece of data that there is. You need to be able to bring it down to something you can see. So you need to know how much kind of roughly money you've got coming in, but it doesn't matter to the dollar. But uh, data warehouses are all summaries and reporting, and generally they have some kind of lag time. Uh, databases can be, don't have to be, but can be uh, instantaneous. Uh, so there's a separation where you'll have lots of databases that feed into maybe a data warehouse, and those will give you the executive high-level summary of what you want. Sometimes you don't know what you want, right? And you want to store it anyway. Data lakes are where you throw everything in there. And then maybe you use some kind of machine learning to figure things out. This is much more like Amazon or uh, Google with YouTube. Uh, you'll, they'll see you over on uh, Google searching for something. And then they'll push something either on Amazon because they sold the data to them. But you don't know how all that stuff is going to fit together. I, I watched a video and then suddenly I start getting emails from Google, uh, AdSense, or I start seeing ads pop up. So there's a lot of different ways that things can come together. Data lakes are really for that kind of artificial intelligence, machine learning, where you're not exactly sure what's going on, 
but you're going to have somebody kind of research it and try to put together uh, the more common events that lead to someone making a purchase or something you want to shove in front of them. So anyway, it's a it's a huge business. Uh, somebody in the den said uh, it was a uh, Dan. Um, It, yeah, I'm, I'm giving – I'm not going to get way into the weeds because these things are very technical. Just on a 30,000-foot on a uh, uh, view, this is the major issues that you're looking at there and the way that they, they work. You don't need to know everything about uh, these, uh, these stocks to trade them. But you do kind of know probably the best thing that uh, Dan brought up in the den was barriers to entry. Um, databases take a long time uh, to get worked out. They have to be one of the few things in software that kind of have to almost be perfect, and they're still not. Uh, data warehouses are fairly new. Data lakes are kind of new. Uh, and they're still kind of working out all the features, and there's a lot uh, from uh, what they do. But that's kind of the 30,000-foot view of uh, – of what these things are, and uh, that's why uh, you want to know which branch they're in. But uh, you know, databases, as I said, could be things from accounting uh, to documents, like uh, uh, DocU. Um, you know, you want to be able to put stuff in and go back and look for it later, but it doesn't really. Uh, apply itself to to traditional databases where you're looking up by a number or a date or you know some small piece of information let's say that you're uh, looking for articles uh, in the newspapers um, something that is a document database would be much better if you're looking for people's names or dates of birth or deaths or all the other things that could be on online media uh, that are articles that aren't in the headlines. You know, ideally, you look in the headlines, but uh, a lot of times it's deeper. So you can have traditional databases. You can have document databases. You can have databases of images and databases of videos, databases of just about any kind of stuff. And um, each one does well at kind of its own mission uh, and those are joined later together in the data warehouse and data lakes anyway uh, just an uh, issue I guess uh, uh, we've got a few things going on here um, did bring up snow we haven't looked at that one in a long time so we'll do that now uh, to, to and reset it here eh, what do you got yeah, just like everything, we're kind of – we're not backing off the previous highs, but we didn't have enough volume the first time. Eight and a half million shares on Snowflake. That was the May 13th high, 159.72, eight and a half million shares. Uh, 6.3 million shares, so you're about 25% light uh, on Friday. Today's going. Uh, I do like kind of the energy was fairly good. You had a good day on the 23rd of June. To pop this up and over, um, a double gap, and you know one of the things I was always uh, when I wrote the software was just how many times you see gaps being hit by double gaps and then getting retested. So my thought would be uh, if you're not long this now, I mean the real risk reward comes back in if you can come back, get into that double gap test it on a lighter volume and then go higher. But uh, kind of a risky thing out here with a lighter volume and that double gap down below. I got some more emails coming in. Uh, Duke, D-U-K. Or Duck. Uh, Duke Energy. Um, I mean, you're on a... You know, you can kind of draw a kind of a small curved dome up here. Um, I mean, you've got your bounce. you got a fairly decent retracement off the lows. Let's see here. Um, well, you did more than a 618 retracement. 107.77 was that off the first move. Uh, 108.90 was... Uh, off the bigger one. 
108.37 off even the larger Fibonacci number if you're looking for it. Um, you got a wide range and you got high volume at the lows. That uh, 96.87 low from June 17th um, is open and has not been retested. So um, I'm a big fan of waiting another 30 days till the end of the summer. Um, we're probably going to see, depending on what these folks are involved in, we're probably going to see, I mean, just uh, historically, energy, natural gas, that kind of stuff, very weak in August. And then it picks back up. So, you know, you, you bounced uh, a bit in UNG, you did. But I think you can get one more chance down in the $18 range. We'll be back in a minute. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. least a kind of a low volume push into the previous two lows um they're doing good at the parks they're doing horrible uh, on streaming and on video in fact uh, i think it was last week ran a fairly good article about how they're continuing to lose a lot of subscribers and the you heard me rail on just how bad uh, the latest Star Wars effort was. Uh, I I thought most people probably didn't enjoy it. I didn't know how bad it was, though. Uh, there was uh, 
uh, uh, article out. And one of the more interesting things is uh, now is that companies outside Walt Disney uh, can, if they run the right hardware, can see uh, what consumers are uh, connecting to and watching. And they can infer that you're watching this or that or the other on Netflix from your Comcast or any of the other companies. But uh, one of the um, things that came out, I think it was Tuesday last week, maybe it was uh, Friday before, is that uh, into uh, uh, the latest Star Wars thing, uh, about uh, halfway in to either uh, episode three or four, I gave up by then, I thought it stunk, um, everybody turned it off mid-show. And later to find out that they were torturing some young girl on the uh, show. I think it was the uh, 10-year-old Leah. Uh, and uh, eh, the viewers were having nothing of it. And turned out in mass. And uh, many of them uh, went and uh, uh, unsubscribed from the Disney show. I think that they they uh, continue to read the headline or read the newspaper and believe their own uh, 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 hyperbole about who they are and what they are. Um, but uh, you know it the history of Hollywood is you do very well for a number of years and then you do very horribly uh, for a number of years and then you're just one of these guys that, they kind of remember of making great movies. And uh, I recommend highly if anybody wants to invest in uh, this kind of product. Uh, the parks probably not so much, but I, I would say certainly movie making in general. There's a documentary called The Kid Stays in the Picture. And it will show you just the kind of uh, – of, uh, narcissism that runs rampant. I spent 10 years out there. Uh, these people were all bat crap crazy. And most of them were just consumed by ego. You would think that a lot of them just want to be creative. And for the most part, that's true. But then you get into the executive part of the business and these people run around totally uncreative, kind of like asking a uh, uh, a very unfunny businessman uh, to to, uh, to uh, make a judgment on what's funny and what's not. Um, and I've sat in those meetings too. <laughs> um, not that I had a lot to do with uh, on the creative side, just on whether or not uh, they could actually do it. Uh, and you know, I'd sit with a customer and they go, "Well, can we do that? Can we not do that? Can you change this? Can you make this for us uh, so that we can do it?" kind of things um, but uh, it attracts a certain type of person and maybe why you see so many people go to Hollywood and leave uh, uh, on buses but uh, I think they've got the wrong folks in there I know the new guys in there trying to clean stuff up but it's very tough to kill a culture of people that think that they know better and uh, let their egos cash checks. Their body can't cash. A little, a little movie humor out there. Anyway, uh, the kid stays in the picture. Robert Evans, who I've met, uh, was quite, quite uh, the gentleman. And uh, he's even got his own series right now about the making of The Godfather uh, that he's in uh uh, he's dead now, but uh, uh, figured in. But uh, he made the greatest movies of the 1970s only to blow up um, and uh, have his own bunch of issues. But uh, the history of all these companies, I think right now the companies that seem to be doing well are Hulu and Paramount. Um, the, the kind of the also rans, uh, Netflix. Uh, they've made a bunch of stuff that people don't want to watch. They're paying people uh, for documentaries that no one's going to watch. Same thing with Amazon. Uh, it seems to be a lot more 
uh, ideology, uh, yeah, ideology, yeah, ideology, uh, than uh, making stuff that people actually want to watch. It doesn't matter so much in Amazon, but on Disney, that's all they got. And I'm not a big fan of it. You know, if they had a big house cleaning, it would still take a year before some of the stuff that they're pushing through um, gets in. So anyway, eh, not so much. Hulu, Paramount, those tend to be making at a price much better. Uh, things are still really tough in Hollywood, though. And that is more than 600 scripted shows. You got to think that if there was any kind of thesis out here, it would be there's too much, not too little in the way of content in this market. But that being said, you got two 11 million share lows and maybe a 4 million share low coming in. Maybe you could bounce back up to 103 or 104, but I think it's probably going to take a year uh, and that is if they're going to get on the stick and get rid of the people making huge mistakes like uh, Buzz Lightyear, which could have been a huge moneymaker for it, but also probably going to end up losing two to three hundred million dollars. And that's on an animated show, just to give you an idea. Uh, it's not your old Pixar. It's not your it's not your grandfather's Pixar uh, at Walt Disney. And uh, eh, what else can you say? Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. As we continue to watch the market, have a little bit of market gas out here. Uh, thirty eight sixty four. Just suspect that we're going to see thirty eight fifty to thirty nine hundred kind of bounce around here until we get some numbers on Wednesday. Uh, got some more emails out here as we go. Okay, talked about that. Okay, haven't talked about Apple in a while. It's got a nice bounce. A uh, little lighter volume than the last leg down. Uh, I think it's going to fool around and go up and test 150. Uh, if it's on light volume, then you're in a bigger trading range from about 150 to 129, 130-ish. There's a gap down about 132. It could just start... Uh, making more of a triangle formation in that area. Don't see a lot of reasons for it to break out of it. Maybe they've got s some new products. Uh, it looks like it's going to be the last week of September uh, for Apple introducing products for fall. Maybe they'll bring something out that's new and exciting. Uh, isn't that part of the Love Boat song? New and exciting. Come on, boy. I watch too much television in the 70s. We'll be back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. 
TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. As we return, we're looking at uh, more chop and market indigestion, uh, and no royal aids to be found anywhere in sight. A uh, question about looking at NVIDIA out here today. Um, I don't know, probably three to six months away from finding a uh, fairly decent bottom. Uh, but that's the rest of the market out there, too. I think we're probably shooting for some kind of, uh, of a long-term rally, or I mean, uh, change uh, upward in trajectory, probably after the elections. And at the moment, the markets tend to look about six months into the future. We're kind of around that uh, that area at the moment. So, um, you know, they markets broadcast the future. So things could get even worse and the markets could go up uh, aiming at six months uh, in the, the future from now. Anyway, uh, yeah, there's not a whole lot there. You broke the low on a lighter volume. You're back into the trading range. Volume's kind of light today on a big uh, downgrade. Uh, the thought was, uh, or at least the rumor they're pushing is that they're going to delay the uh, the uh, new video cards from early September to late September. And, yeah, I think that's about all that matters right there. Okay, uh, question about Micron, as long as we're in the SMHs out here and what's going on. Um, you know, you came up and you tested the previous high on about the same volume on Friday. Yeah, not a whole lot. It's just like the whole market. It's sitting here right below some levels. And, you know, I if you're bullish, you probably want the market to pull back a bit on lighter volume and set up the next rally attempt to break through higher. If you're bearish, what you'd love to see is this, uh, many of these stocks like this go back, fill the gaps on no volume and then give it all up and then go back and retest the lows. But right now you don't have a whole lot either way. Uh, Todd says, what do you think about gold here? Uh, I think we talked about that Thursday or Friday uh, with a collar. I mean, you're... Looking at uh, interest rate hikes uh, till the cows come home. Um, I don't know if there's a whole lot to be uh, done about this. Uh, you know, the gold really didn't start running. It was that run from 1980, 81 to 87 that everybody looks at. And, you know, you had a lot of inflation in the in the 70s, uh, it was the real change uh, that happened. Um, and maybe we could get the same thing again. But uh, that took three or four years to wind up with Jimmy Carter um, before it got really <laughs> uncorked in the 80s. So I don't know if there's a whole lot there to say other than we're probably just building cause for a long-term move you came back retested previous lows on about the same volume that's not a really bullish uh, view long-term in gold um 
always liked uh, the saying from God. What's the guy's name? Can't remember now. Said it's important to buy gold, but it's more important to sell it. Um, it's a trading vehicle, like a lot of them. Uh, when it's hot, it's hot. When it's not, it's not. God, now what? Who sang that song? When you're hot, you're hot. I don't think of it. It's a guy from Smokey and the Bandit. Uh, but uh, certainly, you're just back to probably around average volume. You don't have uh, – the only good thing is you had some good down days. Now you don't have much volume. Uh, James Grant, interest uh, rate observer, is who I'm thinking about. Now it's important to buy gold, but more important to sell it uh, over time. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't see anything much changing. I was looking for 1776 on or 1775 on gold, maybe to potentially hold. It did not. Um, you really need to move back into that uh, uh, 1775 range to get it back into the trading range. Uh, but I think you're probably just waiting, much like uh, the guys did in the late 70s, for all the conditions to kind of turn around. But you had. Uh, what, a 20% interest rate in 1980? Uh, we're headed that way quickly. Uh, you know, who knows what could happen in the fall elections. And, you know, you could get the same kind of huge spending, uh, massive tax increases that kill the economy. And that's really kind of what all got corked up. Uh, and then when it started to unwind in the 80s, that's when gold got popular. 877-927-6648. Jerry Reed, when you're hot, you're hot. When you're not, you're not. Yeah, that's, uh, I thought that was, uh, it was at least around that time uh, of, uh, of uh, Smokey and the Bandit. But I, eh, it all kinds of mushes together. Okay, we got some more emails here. Uh, look at AMD real quick. The old usual suspects. You had your bounce. Uh, it'd be nice to get a retest on lighter volume uh, on this 7160 out here. Uh, everybody, I think, is far too bearish. I don't know if the price is right, but I think they're all far too bearish on the business part of it. The price, uh, you can argue with. The business, I don't think you can uh, a lot of good, interesting stuff going on there. Uh, to, to question about uh, the IBB, I use it because it, oh, there's a great deal more. Um, I like the low um, out here. We tried to buy it. It was uh, when the market wasn't acting as well. I disliked that the energy on the way down was a whole lot more down to that June 16th low, but the volume was not. You had uh, 4.7 million shares to uh, 3 million shares, it popped back into the trading range, and like biotechs, kind of uh, uh, f uh, back in favor again, if there is anything back in favor in the markets. Uh, talked about Planeteer, it's down today, PLTR. Uh, thanks, Joe. So we'll look at that. Um, you know, you kind of are finished what looks like an ABC on the way up. Uh, let's take a look at the expansions. Uh, do I have anything else here? Maybe shorter term. There you go. Um, is there one more? Do we have the one from the bottom? Uh, 644. Okay. Uh, okay, let's do that one. Because that's, I don't know how, if that one's just too far. Let's make that our A. Um, let's make that our B. Uh, can I make that my B? There we go. And we'll make that our C. But I think that was too big of a retrace, which is the problem. But, uh, eh, yeah, yeah, 101 is 1048 on Planeteer. You got to 1038, which is pretty close. Um, First uh, high, uh, 68 million shares. Second high, 54 million shares. You're backing back a little bit. 
I would like this thing to get back to about 850 on light volume, and that may be a, a buy out there. We'll be back in a minute. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. As we return, a uh, special request about uh, why do we always talk about dropping the chalupa. And it was a, a ad from uh, Taco Hell many years ago, but uh, I'll play it. Sir, drop the chalupa. Put it down and back away. Sir, don't be silly. Drop the chalupa. I said drop the chalupa. Put it down, man. Yeah, drop the chalupa. Yeah, I always enjoy that one. So anyway, when the market falls, uh, we talk about somebody uh, uh, either dropping the baby Ruth in the punch bowl or dropping the chalupa. Uh, but uh, uh, just all euphen euphemisms, he said, for uh, markets uh, eh, maybe having a little bit of an air pocket. I don't see much going on. Uh, maybe you do break um, 38.50, but... I don't see a lot of energy in the inner days, either higher or lower here. Uh, just a lot of chop. And uh, like I said, I think everybody's just getting ready to uh, tee off on numbers on Wednesday and Thursday. And in the meantime, I don't have a real good feel, so I don't have to trade. 
uh, I trade to make money, and trading chop just kind of wears me out for when uh, it is uh, time to play the Super Bowl and make real money. And uh, as they say, uh, when it's time to make real money and it's raining cash, uh, put out a few buckets. Uh, when it's not, uh, enjoy your life, do some other stuff. But, uh, you know, maybe we'll have some news. I just don't see anything uh, right now that really jumps off the page at me that says uh, more. But I think by the end of the week, you got uh, uh, options expiration, earnings, and CPI numbers. Uh, back half of this week is loaded with business uh, moving. So when you can, not when you have to, we'll see you here tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems important.